this on Facebook later. Okay. Hey, little craft beer nerds. Welcome to Out Here Having a Pint. I'm your host, Kevin. All my friends call me Pup Dog. I might change it legally. Who knows? Uh, yeah. And with me, always in my face, is Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. How's it going? Going pretty good. What'd you do today? Um, Worked, because it's Friday. And yeah, that's what that's what you do Monday through Friday. Um, luckily, I do work. Um, I'm an essential worker, I guess. Didn't know that, but here I am, important. So it's about time, you know, somebody makes me feel important around here. Now, um, yeah, but that's what I did. So I did a little run today. I went out and um, ran three miles. Pretty proud of myself. Uh, I figured I'd start. May 1st, I will start, you know, working out now, back to the workout. And what better way to start your workout than to drink some beer? I mean, <laughs> I think I'm doing this absolutely wrong. Uh, Kelsey, what, what have you been doing today? Well, I got up this morning and I went to Bloomington. Oh, yeah. So last night I posted on Instagram the first breweries or tap rooms to respond to my post. I would go buy beer from them to mm -hmm. beer ferry to all of our buddies here in town and three of them responded at exactly the same time so i went to the sinkhole and i saw mckinley and all the amazing things that they're doing very to nice get the bar ready for reopening um took a haul from them then i stopped by function and i saw steve from a distance said very hello. nice very nice um Picked up a little haul from him, and then I stopped by Switchyard, and I got to see Curtis and Kelsey. Right. Um, so got a little haul from them, and then I beer ferried for about an hour and a half. <laughs> That's Kelsey with the E, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, every, I think um, everyone. No, I don't think it's everyone. I think only you always say that Kelsey with the E, because you don't your you don't spell yours with the E, right? I think it's like, you know, I always run into Kelsey's and it's always with an E. I'm pretty sure that your name is absolutely spelled wrong. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want me to be different, my name to be spelled differently, so here we are. Yeah, so um, it was awesome. Yeah, to go down there. It was a very nice day. I wish I didn't even work today. Could have called in or I could have called, you know, just took off early, but I had some things to do. Friday's pretty important where I work, but um, – yeah, very nice day just to go out and day drink, really. Uh, I'm glad you went out there to see old McKinley down at the sinkhole down in Bloomington. Um, always has some fantastic beers. I know he had a little bit of uh, 450. He had some Two Toms, which we got in the fridge. But I'm, I'm going to be pulling that out here later uh, and talk about that beer. Um, and then uh, moseying on down to one of my favorite IPAs in Bloomington, uh at function what did you get in function kelsey do you remember i got tangent yes! so last yes. night i was messaging with steve and he had been out of tangent and he messaged me first thing this morning and he was like hey i've got the tangent back hell yeah and he was like you can go ahead and put that in your cart so i hopped online and got some um i picked up something different for everybody from most places. There's a couple of our friends that got kind of the same menu, but not really. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted everybody to be able to have some something different to talk about when we are on Zoom and online. Um, right. So uh, one of the bottles that I got, I can't remember exactly what it's called right off the top of my head, but it was one uh, especially for Brandon. So <laughs> he'll like it. It's one of those types of beers that he likes. And it was the last of the three that Steve had left at Function, so I'm glad I snagged it. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I'm glad you got Tangent. I, that's the beer I was talking about. I love that IPA. Um, yeah, it's one of the well, better ones. Another down one in that Bloomington. I picked up for you that I think that you'll like. It's more up up your up your alley, is because you. Really oh, like I was gonna say up your ass. I, I didn't know where you was going with this. <laughs> It was close, Kelsey. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, what is it? You remember? Or is it going to be a surprise? You're going to be a surprise? You're going to tell me now. 
I think it'll be a surprise, but also I picked up so many beers today. I can't remember all the yeah, names. I, I ca yeah, I walked in and saw all these beers. I'm like, oh my God, because, you know, yesterday we went to, oh no, yeah, you Brewdog. yesterday, yeah, you went to Brewdog yesterday. I went to Brewdog the day before, so we kind of doubled on everything. I think I got every brew dog there is now in my keyser, and yeah, it's going to be a fantastic time. I know tomorrow, I think Crowns and Hops out in Cali is going to have um, Instagram live. Hopefully, hopefully he'll have uh, Zoom. I was on there last uh, last week talking to Tio um, in the gang, so uh, that was fun times. But um, I'm excited for tomorrow too. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow. So for those that are watching. Um, usually I stream music around 10 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, sometimes they are really not supposed to be streamed, and I get either a little bit muted or kicked, uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, it usually takes them about an hour and a half for Facebook to kick in and actually uh, cut me off, but sometimes, you know, I don't even know. You're not supposed to play the music like, so long and if you play the music i think more than 10 seconds uh if it's like uh for copyright reasons then you get a strike or whatever but i'm playing like dj stuff so the music goes by so quickly it mixes and then it comes in and you really can't i mean i don't know it's, i just think it's i hate that it's a damn shame that we can't just especially in these times that we can't just stream music and let everybody enjoy the music because i am promoting it i'm not like promoting myself saying this is the music that I made, you know, here, check it out. I'm just like saying, hey, listen to this, you know. I mean, it's on YouTube for crying out loud. I can go to YouTube and just watch it from there. Those folks don't own it, so why can't I just promote? I don't know. It's dumb. So I also uh, supported local but not local in our state today. I, I'm glad how you transitioned from there. You didn't even like that comment on my music. You're just like, yeah, whatever. And beer. <laughs> it's all right. No, no, it's all right. All right. Uh, we got our guest. It's time for our guest today. Uh, we have a special guest. He just knocked on our door. Let's let him in. All right. Oh, who could that be? I see, that a, I see a copacetic beer factory logo. And look, we have Sean in the house. Sean, man, how's it going? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? We're doing great. We're doing great, man. I'm glad you could join tonight. I know it's a uh, it's a little bit late, but it's Friday and it's uh it's beer thirty already. So you know. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I got yeah. the the kids playing Sonic on his pad, mm -hmm. so I've I've got some time, man. That's been a rough bounce and some time, but I'm here. Hell yes. Yeah. yeah. Cheers to you. So what are you drinking on first? I got a at the factory. I got a fresh delivery of the uh, Indie Independent Relief uh, oh. beer. This one out of Grand Junction. This is uh, the Essential Pilsner. Ooh. It's ah. solid. It's solid. I think I missed that one. I know that they didn't have the social distancing one. Um, that one went fast. I had that one a couple weeks ago. Maybe two or three weeks ago, I got that one. And we sold out of five cases in went by like, quick. two hours. I couldn't even, I couldn't even get one. I, I, everywhere, I, you know, we kind of called around, and they're like, no, they're all sold out. I was like, shit, can't get it. Oh, well. Uh, I maybe posted... Sean Webster's done a really good job. He's the one that's putting all this together. He's done a really good job of promoting it. And I put a post out that said I got it because I got it much later than everybody else. And uh, I had a guy call from Carmel, and he drove from Carmel just to get a six-pack because it was the only other place he could get it. So it's a well-sought-after beer. Yeah, yeah, especially – uh, Yeah, it's a Pilsner, which, you know, it, it's – Kind of hard to find breweries that's that you know making some uh, really great uh, pilsners out there. So yeah, I know yeah, Grand Junction's doing. They do quite a few lagers. I know my mm -hmm. buddy uh, Hofferman when he was working there, he put a lot of emphasis in their lager beers. Um, and just with how this program is going, people donating grain and, and other ingredients. Uh, I was talking with Ryan, the brewer now, and he said, yeah, it was just natural to. He had some lager yeast and. Everything he got uh, lent itself to Pilsner. It's really tasty. It's really good. Heck yeah, yeah. So for uh, for those that are watching, this is going to be um, this is we're live on Facebook right now. But this is actually I'm recording this. I'm gonna throw this on YouTube as well tomorrow. Uh, for the folks that maybe don't even know, just uh, tell everyone who you are and um, where you're located and what you do. 
Sure. So yeah, uh, my name's Sean Manahan. People call me Dr. Hoppenstein. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am the owner and brewer of uh, Copacetic Beer Factory in Monticello, Indiana. Uh, we just celebrated our three-year anniversary of being open. And uh, let's see, about eight years before I opened Copacetic, I started brewing. I was, uh, yeah, so I was 21, fresh 21, and People's Brewing Company wow. opened in 2009. I started brewing there in 2010, uh, migrated down to flat 12, mm -hmm. was a director of operations there for about three and a half years before my son was born. We moved back up to Monticello and after brewing for eight years, it was, a. I didn't know what else I was going to do, you know, so. How, brew, how, just keep yeah. Brewing. How hard is it to open a, a brewery? I mean, to, because you was, <laughs> uh, you were a brewer and then you just like, okay, I'm gonna open a brewery. I mean, how did that even come about? Oh, wait a minute. Before you answer that, we're going to bring in our, our other co-host. He's Ooh. late, so we're going to give him a hard time because he's late to the game. Uh, this is Brandon Fry, uh, Sean. He is the um, assistant brewer at Cedar Creek, so he's part of the uh, OHAP family okay. now. All right. He right, rang, right, my, right, he right. rang my doorbell, so I'm going to bring him on in. And, yeah, let's, let's give him a big – well, he's a minute late, so – Actually, you know what? No, he's about 14 minutes late because we kind of we went on at 7:45 to do some introductions. I, I am not no 14 minutes late. You can piss off. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Brandon? How's it going? You call, you call me 14 minutes late and say they're you know say uh, let's say an hour ahead of time. Oh, by the way, be 15 minutes early. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did change the times because I wanted to um, you know, get the introductions out the way at 7:45, and then when you know everyone else comes in. So how you doing, Brandon, man? I'm doing did you, great. you take a, Did you take a nap? Did you fall asleep? Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm there old. you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> You're old. This, is yeah. this is quarantine. All right. Yeah. So I was in the middle of asking Sean, man. So yeah. So after flat twelve, how hard is it to, you know, or or how that come about? You starting your own brewery way up north. For well, us, anyway. Uh, moved back home for sure. My wife and I are both from Monticello. Uh, and when I moved back, my parents already had a pizza joint. Uh, so the scoreboard is attached to the brewery. And that was a huge leg up because we had a lot of, I guess, permits and infrastructure in place to start building a pub off of. I didn't have to start from scratch. And, uh, you know, with brewing experience, I know what I knew what equipment I needed. Everything that I use is Blickman. So that's right in my backyard. It was easy to to get and get that all lined up. And um, that experience also led me to know what permits I need to get into, the order of operations, what's required in those permits. I think I was very fortunate in that we went from conception to opening the doors in like four months. Holy crap. Yeah. About as long as it takes to get the permits and we were ready to go. Um, so yeah, I was I was really lucky. I know there's some guys in Lafayette that just opened uh, Escape Velocity, and yep. that's kind of the other side of how your luck can go. Because I believe him and his wife have been trying to open for like three and a half years now, right? And they opened in the middle of this pandemic, so they're gonna get it's there. They've been crazy. working hard at it. And they're gonna get it yeah. all open. We had we were fortunate enough to get us a uh, growler, so we have that in the fridge right now. So. We'll, we'll probably tackle that later on tonight. Um, Breeze in the house. Breeze, our other co-host. We have four. We have four folks in out here having a pint. Um, haven't seen Breeze in a long time. I miss your face. I haven't I saw you in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's a, It's got a little, little got a little uh, hair on it now. So I don't know. It was long. <laughs> it was longer. I was not going to shave it until the brewery's fully open. But it got to the point where it was getting all hobo-ish. I couldn't stand it anymore. <laughs> I couldn't stand it, man. I had to, at least I trimmed it. Now, when they do open all the way, then I am going to cleanly shave it. But, uh, nice. yeah. So a that is solidarity. The, yeah, it out. So, Sean, that is the big, uh, you know, big conversation, like, you, you know, forever. It's like, you know, how's your, how's your breweries, how's it adapted now that this uh, COVID thing you know, has come about and, and how you've been doing since then? Well, uh, it's definitely been interesting <laughs> to say the least, but I always go back to, you know, when I decided to open this brewery in Monticello, it's a smaller rural town. 
I most of my experience was on 20 barrel systems brewing pretty large distribution uh, level ba- uh, level batches. Mm. What I have now is a two barrel system, and that two barrel system has. There you go. It's been amazing. There you go. <laughs> rock, rock, rock the micro nano. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I'm still brewing. It hasn't changed my schedule at all during oh, wow. during this shutdown because I'm still making about eight barrels a week and we're still still selling eight to nine barrels a week through the shop. Hell yeah. Which, you know, if you look at Flat 12 where I, where I previously was or now it's rad, mm-hmm. uh, they have 150 barrel fermenters out back. I'm, this is going to hurt 150 barrels, but two barrels. Right. I'm in a unique situation on my small batch. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think the local community in Indiana has supported breweries big time. I mean, I, you know, a couple of brewery owners have kind of let me, you know, peek that, you know, their sales and stuff like that. And they're doing, they're doing amazing. I mean, you know, yes, they, you know, probably um, would want to open fully, but now that they adapted to like, say, carry out or delivery and, and things like mm-hmm. that, and then just people wanting to support and wanting to, you know, get there and get, still get beer because, you know, people still need their beer. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's essential. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. So I think it's cool. And I that. think it's been, I've had some really interesting conversations with, uh, some of my friends at different breweries of all levels. I had a conversation with Josh Hambright. Uh, he's at Daredevil now, and he said that they're still they're still brewing on their large system, but instead of mostly draft and their you know their big ones lift off, instead of mostly draft, they've moved to like some like 85, 90 percent into package because they're doing all this carry out. Other businesses can do carry out. Uh, the state changed the liquor laws, so anybody with a permit at this point can do carry out. Yeah. So they've uh, yeah, made an I'm interesting sure. shift. Uh, my buddy Chris Berger is a brewer now at uh, Sierra Nevada, in North Carolina, and he runs their bottling line or helps their bottling line. And he said they've just been cranking it out because here in Monticello you can get beer really at Copacetic or Kroger and Walmart. And if you're getting beer at Kroger and Walmart in a craft setting, you're getting Sierra Nevada. I mean, or Sam Adams, I don't know, but they're, they have basically maybe been bells. unaffected. <laughs> maybe, maybe some bells. Yeah, maybe some bells. Uh, so there's, it's been nice having a pub and having the food option. So we've been doing delivery pizza and wings with the beer. That's a pretty killer combo. I wish that existed when I was in college. Get beer delivery. <laughs> pizza. No joke. <laughs> uh, so I think it's, it's, it's definitely been an interesting time and I'm, I'm definitely glad to hear we're moving towards kind of getting back to some level of normal and hopefully everybody else can kind of pick up where they've had to either stop altogether or slow down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I'm going to open up Kel- Kelsey. I'm going to open up to you. I'll open up to you. Um, I ran out of beer. I think I need to go get another refill really quickly. And then, yeah, you guys carry, carry the yeah, carry the conversation. I'm gonna grab another, and I gotta. Uh, I'm excited to get this to get this beer. I'm gonna say, bringing Kelsey, bringing Kelsey can go for the long haul. I'm done with my first beer. I'm going for another one. Oh yeah, these, yeah, yeah, Brandon, Let's go get some beer. We need we need another beer. We'll be right back. What are you guys um, drinking? Um, I forgot. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I've not heard of that one. I am one. drinking currently um, Indiana City's Regulate. Oh, it's a oh nice that's a good one. Yeah, super easy to drink. It's only like four and a half percent, I think. So um, I picked this up earlier this week when I got their really awesome T-shirt. <laughs> Kevin's running. <through laughs> um, Dude, I don't know how. I don't know who came up with that T-shirt idea, but if they don't keep that on, they're just going to shoot themselves in the foot. I know they need to just keep that shirt always. I think it's someone you know, you there. A, that, what's I know what you're talking about. What does it say? The dude dope. Dude dope shit. Shit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When you have like a winning <laughs> thing, you, there's definitely some pressure to keep it around. See, Kelsey, this is why we need a like a little fridge in in this room, so I can just turn around and grab the beer, so I don't have to run all the way to the kitchen. I think it's a good investment that I could I, I have a little beer fridge. Or if anybody wants your, to sell me your one. your game spot? 
This is, yes, I was going to talk about that uh, as well. You need yes. to put a tap right there. I know. Tell me about it. You're right next to you. Yes, this is my game spot. This is where I play World of Warcraft, you know, just game. On nice. The <laughs> so you had beers basically named after Hunter's abilities off of World of Warcraft. Is that correct? I did. Oh, man. I did. Hunter abilities and some, uh, some fun guild achievements that we had. I sure did. did still, still have some. Do people do people know that that it's based off of World of Warcraft? No. No, it's all. I, think I haven't it's had awesome. a single person say like that sounds like Warcraft. Yeah, I think no. it's awesome, especially with the hunter abilities. Yeah, when we was on the uh, Bruce cruise and you was telling me that, that just blew my mind because it's kind of rare that you bump into people that are actively playing World of Warcraft or know what you're talking about. But when you <laughs> when you say World of Warcraft and somebody knows what you're talking about, boom, it's the instant connection right there. So I think. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've had uh, Misdirection on tap. I've had Fame Death on tap. Oh, man. We did Bane of the Fallen Blonde. I actually had a, a guy that's in my <laughs> guild from Ohio came up and brewed. Wow. Oh, yeah, we've had several. We've had several. See, that's why I wish I lived up there so I can go to your place all the time because, you know, we live, what, three, I think two and a half hours away from you? From Copacetic? I it's know a hall. Sure. I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's like two times too, which is a great place. And uh, yeah, he's far away too. Oh, speaking of times, this is what, so I went to the, um, so this is McKinley from 450. This is his new place called the Seco. So we had to go down there and uh, show some love for him because he's uh, redesigning his place. He's making a new bar. And so I got some two times key lime pie. This is what I had. I was so mad that I have not been able to try that yet. Oh, well, did, Damn! Did, did Kelsey drop it off? I got different stuff for everybody. Mm, maybe I'll, okay. that key lime, you know, it's real good, but it's like a taste that not everyone can or would enjoy. I guess I could say. So I didn't want to like buy everybody key lime, and maybe they didn't see like key can, lime pie. See if I can get it focused. Come on, camera. Who doesn't like key lime pie? Don't let me down, I don't camera. Like key lime pie. <laughs> oh. But I love that beer. Don't let me down. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. It, the color kind of puts me off. The color makes me just a little bit fearful because I've never had good green beer. Look at that. Look so, at that color. Oh, look at that. Yeah, That's that color's shot. awesome. Man, I'll tell you what, with, with, with the color of the beers, uh, it, I know I'm a, I'm a sucker for them. I mean, if, they, if it has really great coloring, I was like, oh, what is that one? And, um, yeah. I so, normally – it's amazing to me how much my, like – personal preferences and how I go through on designing have changed on a smaller system. That is something that I would have probably never done on a 20, 40 barrel setup. But with one and two barrel batches, I do a lot of fruited and colored beers. I'm, I'm actually surprised. <laughs> yeah, I'm sur yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's, um, we bought a BrewDog beer. It was a blueberry milkshake. And so it was very colorful can. So when I opened the can, I expected it to be the color of, you know, bl blue. So when I poured mm -hmm. it, it was just like a golden color. And it got me thinking. I'm like, well, BrewDog, like, brews on a huge ass system. And I'm pretty sure they probably don't want all that fruit or even coloring going through their pipes, right? Is, is that hard to right. – yeah, is that hard to clean afterwards? Probably, you know? Depending, you know, on big batches like that. Um, so when I started at Flat 12, one of the first beers that was a seasonal that I brewed for him was the Cucumber Kolsch. Mm. And it was the first time we did it on a big system. And so we had this cucumber extract to get the flavor because I think the very first time they did it, it was like five pounds of cucumbers in a five-gallon, like corny keg wow. to get the flavor. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, a pound per gallon, you're talking 150 barrels. Mm. It's impossible to get that many cucumbers. So when you're big like that, you have to use these extracts, and those extracts can definitely stain lines, plus color can stain lines. Right. But again, on the, my small system, even a two-barrel batch, it's only – I mean, it's still 60 pounds of cucumbers. It's still a lot. But it's yeah. doable, I guess, mm. and that, that wouldn't leave the flavor like extract does. So do you have like headliner beers where you like you have your um, normal 
running beers or is it just all you just rotate everything um i haven't been up there enough i think i've I only been there like one time we was at the bruise cruise and i was looking at your board and you had some great shit up there um yeah what type of beers does copacetic brew well uh we've got at our tap uh or at our at our bar we've got 20 taps um and since day one from my, when i've opened we've only carried indiana beers so then when I got able to brew a little bit more and have more volume, the plan is with the 20, we have four generic categories. We have light, dark, hoppy, and malty. And I always try to keep five beers in every category. Okay. So that makes it easy when I'm ordering, but it makes it difficult when I'm trying to figure out what to brew just to keep things set up in the categories. So I actually brew a lot of random stuff. Uh, <laughs> I got my permit May 10th of uh 2017 and in that time we've brewed something like 425 different beers Shit. So most of it is rotating nice. mm. but there are i would say about eight beers that i would consider core brands house brands that i right. brew more often dr hoppenstein is an ipa that last week i actually did two batches of it because right now the, the people coming in drinking at copacetic are more your beer nerd yeah so they're not coming in for the cream ale and the kolsch Sure. They're coming in for the IPAs, coming in for the doubles. See, I did a lot of Hoppestein. That's one that I do quite a bit. Yeah, I know. Uh, Wayne Horn talks a, a lot about the Hoppestein. And, um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember what IPA. I did have an IPA when I was down there, and I can't remember what I had. Um, but, yeah, it was great beer for sure. When I, It's kind of like the Indiana City shirt. When something really goes over well, people really want me to keep it and, and yeah. keep making it, keep it on here and there. But a lot of times I'm just like, oh, I want to try this with an IPA. So I'll just throw a bunch of stuff together. Yep. It's labeled in my beer smith. It's labeled. So I have the recipe somewhere, but it's like a series of numbers and letters. So someone's like, I really like that <laughs> one IPA you had. I'm like, ah, good luck. Maybe, maybe That's I'll try to brew it again. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's also the plus of having those two barrel systems is I wonder if I did this, what that would end up being like. And mm -hmm. then it gets fun. Yeah, brewing, you know, I really liked learning on 20 barrel systems and, and much bigger fermenters. Uh, just because you got the ins and outs, you're brewing. We brewed half cycle, like 40 barrels a half cycle every single week when I was at flat 12. So you really get it you get to know the process, not so much on development. Uh, but now with the two barrel, it's, uh, I mean, no. you know, at Flat 12, maybe we brewed 15 to 20 different beers over the course of a year. Wow. But at, uh, at Copacetic, shit, I'm doing 30 different doing beers double? a month almost. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Way more than that. <laughs> yeah. Way more yep. than that. Which so, sounds, fun. sounds like a lot of work, man, for sure. But I, I'm pretty sure it's fun. I mean, you, you're doing what you you're doing what you're wanting to do. You're doing what you what you love, and most people can't say that. You know, what I mean, they go to their nine to five and say, "Ah, oh, I'm working for the man." You know, but yeah, but now you you are the man, so that's awesome. You know, you're doing what you want to do. That's true. Yep. So no, I got anything, no complaints. Is there anything that you're doing now um, that you feel like is going to carry over after everything lifts? Like something that you've done differently that you're going to keep. That is a really good question. Um, on the brewing side, not so much, but on the business as a whole, um, the, the delivery aspect has proven really I was beneficial. Say delivery, don't lie. Yeah, I was yeah say, the delivery we, has been awesome. Your, your weekdays, uh, at least where we've been at, our delivery has completely changed what our weekdays look like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And like the carry out. The community, this small community has been really good at supporting pretty much all the businesses that have stayed open. So we do a lot of curbside carry out, but I think some of the people are getting more into the, they can order a 32 ounce growler with their pizza. Yep. You know, they can get a couple of them. I bought in some uh, 10 liter kegs, so like two and a half gallons. So I'm delivering, and that's basically like case of beer. I'm delivering kegs to people's houses at this point. Yeah, and it's continuously getting more and more people are like well that's really cool yeah i'll take a keg the hand pump a giant <laughs> large pizza and a bunch of wings 
<laughs> that's probably Ooh. something that I would look forward Damn, to. Damn, that's a party. What are, you doing? what are you doing this What are you doing this week? What are you doing this week? Get fat and drunk. Shut up. No, Don't judge no me. Doubt. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Pizza. We're locked down. What am I gonna do? Exactly. Can't go to the what gym. Might as well drink a case of beer. Right. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna be happy. <laughs> Screw you. No. <laughs> Yeah, that is perfect. Man. Yeah, I don't... You... Go ahead, Kelsey. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, he mentioned, you know, that he's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but honestly, that's a huge advantage, I think. Right. I mean, that place is awesome, and I can't wait to go back and visit. And it's like having all that to offer, you definitely have to run with that when it, when everything opens back up. That's just hilarious. Pizza, wings, keg, I'll take all of it. Yeah, yep. it's it's been going good, and, you know, Luckily, we did have a decent amount of time building up, you know, three years, I guess, to really show the local community what we had. Again, everything I carry is Indiana products. So all my cans, bottles, wine, spirits, um, and wanting to support us, they've come in and they say, okay, well, now what wines do you have? They typically might not come in to get the wine, but they're getting a pizza. My, I have a carryout permit as a whole for my three-way, so they can always come in and buy stuff for carryout whenever they want. And I think that's really starting to show some people, um, get them more interested in what we're doing. I think it's unfortunate, in the, definitely in a town like this, when people think craft beer, too often they think it's, uh, it's always a double IPA with 300 IBUs. But this is giving them a chance to say, well, I still have a cream ale. I still have a good hef. We always mm -hmm. have... Uh, you know, decent, I got a brown ale with peanut butter on that people love. And oh. something that they might not have tried before. Now they come in, now they say, okay, craft beer isn't just, you know, bitter beer faced commercials type I've of thing. Yep. Yep. Well, well, it's it's kind of yeah. Now, if you want to, like, send me. I've got a kid me, working for me now, a 19 you, year old. Right. If you want to send me yeast samples, well, you go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Before yeast samples, I shipped it as uh, snow globes. Oh, very nice. You can't ship liquid, but you can ship lava lamps. There you lava go. lamps. Oh, See, yeah. that's, that's a good one. Can't ship liquid, but snow globe. I'll tell you what, this key lime pie is great, Bree. It's like very, like, it's really sour. It tickles your jaws, and it's like, woo. Does it taste it, super artificial? Because that's always my thing with flavored extract beers. Um, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not really artificial. You <laughs> yeah, taste it. it doesn't taste artificial. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, no. I was thinking because I was thinking. Yes, I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. But this one's great. It has a little bit of salt to it. You know, um, that uh, kiwis. That kiwi explodes. Uh, I think you like this one. Yeah. Maybe we'll pick one up and okay. drop it off again. Yeah, drop it off to you guys. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's not like I don't work. You know, ten minutes from there, I should just. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You, you, you do work down there. The hell, no. <laughs> so, Sean, you got this event, man, coming up. What do you think? You think it? You think it's gonna be still be on? Called the Bruise Cruise. I think the Bruise Cruise is on. When was that? September fifth, I think. Yeah, September oh, man. first he's Saturday, good. September. He's um, so good. He's so good. We're we're still getting drunk with him. Oh, nice. <laughs> we um. Let's see. Well, so we learned a lot from the first year. Uh, and the first year we also had the cruise and then cleaned up and then they had a separate cruise on the boat that night oh. just in case the Bruce cruise was kind of a flop, <laughs> but it went over really great. And so we decided we'll make the cruise later in the day. Um, now I got a team of volunteers that are going to help move the kegs because I did that all myself like an hour before we opened and it was nuts. Oh God. Uh, but no, I'm excited. Yeah. It's also, they moved the Derby. They moved the Kentucky Derby to be on that day. Yeah. So I think we might have like a Kentucky Derby theme on the boat. Oh, oh. Can we, can we all wear big hats. Big hats. <laughs> big hats. Yeah, yeah big fancy, fancy dresses. Wear your fancy, fancy hats. hats and bourbon. Fancy hats and bourbon. I declare. <laughs> And I'm, real, like, I'm, I'm real excited for it. Wait, hold on, hold on. It, are we betting on Kevin if he's the fastest jockey? Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I would put my money on Kevin. <laughs> hey, w my job sent me to to Kentucky during the Kentucky Derby events, and okay, everywhere I went, they trying to smoke you in, Kevin. No, they kept on asking me if I was a uh, a, a jockey, and they was wanting to buy me like free drinks and stuff. And I felt 
I didn't want to lie, so <laughs> I said, said no. Yes, right? No, I didn't say oh. yes at first. Not at first. I said my last. Years. Yeah, my last day. I got so tired of people <laughs> asking me that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a jockey. Yeah, and I looked over to my, uh, you know, my boss. I was like just smiling and shit, and he was buying me drinks. I was like, okay. And then one person, yeah. uh, one person gave me. He's like, we'll give you a free ride. You just show this ticket. And then they, he gave me some ticket, and I was like, okay. But I was leaving. So I didn't. <laughs> As he, as he rolls into the strip club, and that's how I explained it to Kelsey. So if you want to get <laughs> if you want to get free stuff down in Kentucky, and if you're five one, be short and Hispanic. <laughs> yeah, take a little vacation down there. You'll just like get free things. You should you know learn at least a couple things about horses. That's true. <laughs> that you can just throw out there just in case. Yeah. They have four legs and they yeah. run really yeah. hard. <laughs> it goes fast. Well, I did have a horse when I was 10 years old. So I, I just know a little tiny bit about horses, but, you all, know. All right. The the, 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 pyre, the pony at Myers doesn't count, Kevin. All right. <laughs> We're just playing, you know. Uh, Bree is the horse expert in this group. Oh, yeah. She does. Got some big old horses. She has some big ho Yeah. See? Yeah, they're hanging out. They're mowing mm. my back lawn. They look like they're, they're going to do an album cover. Right, they are. They're like posing for <laughs> for an album cover. <laughs> Shit. Oh, they're cute. They can smell so, the yeah. smoker in there. To do with it. So this copacetic Bruce Cruise event, so it's basically um, a huge-ass huge, huge -ass boat. I, I forgot what the boat was. What is it? Uh, Madam Carol. The boat's uh, it's called the Madam, Madam Carol. Carol. And then, um, yeah, it's like a the just a beer. drink some more? It's a beer. It's just a beer fest on a boat, and it goes and it's it goes yep. through the river, and then comes comes around, and you just like you're just chilling, drinking beer. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fantastic time. Copacetic beer, or do you get surrounding breweries to join you? Yeah, we get. To, I mean, it's a it's a moderately sized beer fest. I think it's incredibly large for being on a boat. Mm -hmm. But last year we had a total of sixteen breweries. Got it. Yeah, 16 breweries we on had, this it's, boat. It's the biggest boat in the state of Indiana. Uh, oh, so it's got you. two decks, and we had eight breweries downstairs, eight breweries upstairs on this patio. The band was downstairs. Fairly decent day. I mean, it was a little overcast, but you're on the lake. It was, yeah, uh, yeah it's three-hour cruise you know, back and forth on the lake, so it was a little dry dock time and then floating. Let's not lie. It could be pouring rain. you got craft beer. you got good people, and you're on a boat. Who gives yeah. a shit? Yep. Nobody cares. Oh, it yeah, was fantastic. It, yeah, because uh, yeah, if it was raining, we just like go downstairs and chill out. Yeah, down there. Kevin, if it was raining at that point, you were probably so lit that you wouldn't even notice it was raining. Well, I didn't get like I didn't drink at first because I was like filming some things. I wanted to make a little promo video out of it, so I was running around with the camera. Fair but enough. yeah, but yeah, I usually like get a little. Kelsey feeds me drinks like I'm a little baby, so she goes, "Here you go, here you go, here you go." So. Yeah, I was a. Uh, yeah. By, <laughs> by the time I got she off the boat. By the time I got off that boat. She your gently if he's lying. No. <laughs> I had to run as soon as that event was over. I literally ran across the street to the brewery, got in my car, and I had to go to a buddy's wedding. Oh God! Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I, was I forgot about so that. What you're is, you had the ultimate free game. I I did, I did, <laughs> and it was at my in-laws' house. Oh, Christ. So it was like, <laughs> at least I was in a comfortable place. Uh, it was it was a good day. Now I've got nothing scheduled that day. The yeah. boat, I think the Bruce crew started at like 11. Yeah. 12 or 11. So now we're doing it later in the afternoon. So I think it should be way more chill. But we've got most of the breweries coming. The mm. Lafayette area ones are going to repeat. But basically everyone else, we've got uh, new breweries coming to join us. Oh, sweet. Be fun. Hell yeah. I hope two times like, come. Yeah, they should. They should be bringing if, their if, stuff. If they're not, if no, they're, they're not on board, Kevin will call them. That's right. I will call Tom and say you Give need to come shit. to the Bruce Cruise because I think he would like it. And I think I've he, got fourteen good to go now. I wanted to get the Lafayette crew, make sure that they could come. There's a couple new breweries in Lafayette that are coming. Awesome. But yeah, I'll have to look at the spreadsheet. You got escape velocity. Got. What's that? You got escape velocity. I got to check. I don't think I have escape velocity because oh, I wasn't sure when they were going to open. I need to get a hold of them. Yeah, seriously. I do have uh, Theme and Wagner coming this year. They didn't They didn't make it last year. There you go. Escape velocity opened like 
a week ago, so I wouldn't yeah, we was, if you didn't have them on the list. You yeah, we was talking of... about them opening, you know, through all this, <laughs> you know, pandemic. So it's kind of hard. I see a couple of businesses opening up. Didn't um, somebody from Plainfield, didn't they open a brewery, Brandon, in Avon uh, or Plainfield, Avon, whatever you want to call it? I think it's the same, right? No, that's the same. I, like, the, yeah, I like how Bree and I are looking at each other and going, huh? Well, they're the same building as what, what Black Swan was. So, oh, yeah. Oh. Um, oh, crap. What's their, yeah, they're, they're opening up pretty soon here. And then you got Black Dog on deck. If they ever make it, yeah, I, um, I have no idea who that is either. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Man. Talking to Morrisville, but they've been attempting to open for the last two years. So year. this will be. We'll give them a year. This will be entertaining. So it it's, looks like it's always two sides of that coin. It either works well or it's a nightmare. Yep. Yep, and and, and I think you'll understand when we say like permitting sucks. I mean, the, yeah. Jim, oh, yeah. the, the statement starts and ends at permitting sucks. Yeah, yeah. So what's it? What's the dates now? Um, I think Holcomb today was uh, speaking, talking about you know reopening. We're not even, we're not even speculating until we see the effective uh, the effective executive order. Mm -hmm. um, so the Brewers Guild has legal representation. It's awesome that goes and looks at every time the governor says something, uh, and kind of just gives it a quick once over and says, "Hey, everybody." Here's what this means for you. Here's what this means for the breweries. And I do mean this by, and I mean, you can agree with me or not, on the, that one of the benefits of being a brewery in Indiana, we have fantastic legal representation. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, we literally have a firm that legally represents us at the state house that steps forward in any sort of legislation or w when all this started going down, is there for us to just give us the inside touches and nuances on the legal aspects of, hey, here's what the legal orders and the executive orders means for you as a brewery. If you have a carryout permit, here's what it means. If you have food, here's what it means. If you are just a producer, here's what it means. So we haven't gotten that yet. We were, tech, uh, we were checking in with our officer about at three o'clock today right after the news conference and we haven't gotten the official readout yet so we're expecting that in the next uh, probably by next by tomorrow afternoon but from what everyone can interpret if you're a restaurant style with food may 11th is going to get interesting mm -hmm. you can open at partial capacity but beyond that there's no one that's given a clear indication beyond july um so we're all kind of watching the calendar and watching for a little bit more legal interpretation. What can you do? What can't you do before that July date where they throw the doors open and say, everything's on, all bets are off, have fun, drink, and be merry. Yeah, I think they was aiming for the, uh, the, uh, the 4th of July weekend to really, uh, for, yep. for the last stage, you know, everything to be open. So. Um, let's cross our fingers and hope that happens. Man, I'm tired of, you know. Liberty, independence, drinking. Yep. It's hey. awesome. No. <laughs> I'll just drink. <laughs> Exercise their free for alcohol. <laughs> yep. John, you drinking more or less now that, this, uh, now that this COVID thing's going on? So as a, as a <sighs> national level. I'm go kind on. of about the same. <laughs> Yeah, about the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. I think I'm drinking more. I think I'm drinking more now that I'm inside. And I, I'm usually not an inside drinker. I don't drink, like, really inside. But now that, you know, I can't go to breweries, I, I'm a socialite. I really like to, you know, be around sure. folks. And now I'm just drinking on Zoom. Yeah. That's the, biggest, I do that. the biggest downside for me, you know, because I like having a team working with other people, doing the brewing, you can bounce ideas off people. But now if I need to like check the carb of a beer, if I'm doing some kind of flavor infusion, I need to check that. Even if it's an ounce or two here or there, I'm drinking all of that. Yeah. You know, over the course of a day, that's, you know, if let's say it's eight to 10 different experiments I'm checking throughout the day. That's a lot of two ounce samples yeah. here and there. And then I'll have yep. the beer at the end of the day because now I'm done. So I <laughs> have three or four beers at work. <laughs> And then, and then you're and then you're having a beer because you're lonely. And then you're having. <laughs> yeah. Then I get a beer when I get home. You know. And 
Then it's almost bedtime. I might as well have a beer. <laughs> have another beer. Man. Yeah. Have a, everybody have, have you, here beer, there beer, everywhere beer, beer. <laughs> My daughter was born. I don't know. Maybe you can hear. She yeah. was born yeah. May fourth. Uh, <laughs> right before yeah. this all happened. So I guess in that effect, I've actually probably drank less. Also that. And sleeping less. Also, <laughs> happy early birthday to her. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Hey, to, happy early birthday to your youngin. So yeah, you no doubt. Cheers. Cheers. Woohoo! Yeah. All right, I think I think another guest is also going to join join us as well. Um, if it comes if it comes through, um, his name is Curtis. Uh, he is the owner of or uh, what the co-owner of Switchyard. Which oh, are brewing go. down in, in Bloomington. So, oh, somebody knocked on my door. Let's see. Oh, Curtis in the house. Someone heard my bells. We got to ask them to come over. <laughs> let's, see, let's see if we can get his uh, video going. <laughs> Curtis, what's up, man? Whoa, I still have my virtual background on. Hold yeah, on. Let's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> is that the Star Trek? Are Curtis, you there? Yes, there we go, bud. You look like you. What's up, guys? guys? What's going on? Hey, 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 I am. Hey, what's up, buddy? I am uh, sitting here, uh, having a little, having a little fire. Awesome. Enjoy the nice weather. Yeah, yeah. Curtis, um, you're with the uh, the whole Hap crew, which is uh, Brandon Fry. You know Brandon from Cedar Creek. Um, I know you know Kelsey for sure. Oh yeah, I saw Kelsey earlier today. Um, yep. Brandon's wife Bree. Hello. And then, um, Hello. and then we have Sean in the house from Copacetic Beer Factory. Yeah, like, yeah. Dry, love, love what those guys do. How are you yeah. guys doing? Doing good, hey, man. Good. Just drinking. Drinking. Oh, it's fun. Drinking and having a good ass time, man. Oh. Curtis, what are you drinking? What are you drinking on? I don't even want to show you because it's a. It's, oh yeah, baby! No, no, no! Do it! Secret. Do it! There is no shame. <laughs> As I'm wearing my drink Indiana hat. Mm-hmm. Drinking Bud Light. Yeah, yeah. drinking St. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am enjoying what reminds me of Vegas because I got. Well, it's what I usually order every time I'm sitting at the, uh, at the. Uh, uh, craps table, <laughs> and okay. uh, that is the one and only Modelo. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you're, hey, you were just selling. You're celebrating Cinco de Mayo early. It's fine. We're okay. Yeah, we're right. good. Hey, it's much better than Malort. Oh my God, hey. Malort. everything is better than Malort. <laughs> you do not, right. do not take the name I'm, of Malort in vain. <laughs> so I'm feeling a few raindrops. Cannot right do now, it, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, my lord's right, disgusting. Listen, listen, you're holy seed of brew dog. All right, she loves my lord. I got her drinking that. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> who, who loves my lord? What was it? Amy from brew dog? Or... She oh. was one of the higher ups from Scotland that came. So that makes That's sense. Incredibly okay. rare to oh, come to Scotland. You, That's a unicorn. No, no, I, I agree with you. If you if you're from Scotland, I can understand why you like Malort. That you know, if you have a finer palate, you enjoy a good liquor. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You mean you enjoy <laughs> licking the inside of a gym sock? Because that's about what it tastes like. <laughs> Cardboard. <laughs> If you like what a pair of boxer shorts tastes like. <laughs> COVID-19 tastes better than the Lord. Yeah. I love it. We're all, we're all sitting here and, you know, we're all sitting here. We're all sitting here joking about it. And we, we know someone's sitting there going, the Lord's tasty. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know, what is it? Who, who, where were they? Uh, where were we that we were drinking at it? Crap. Uh, Kumas. Kumas. Kumas sitting there going, screw you, hippies. They're like, there's a reason we keep Malort on. <laughs> yep. I wish more college bars in Bloomington, like when some frat bros show up and they're like, just, just give me a really good shot. Take a shot of Malort. Oh, fucking Malort. Yeah, yeah, well, the oh, my God. Right now they, they substitute Jaeger. All right. So Curtis, sure you, should definitely, you should definitely do yeah, that, yeah. Curtis. You should definitely I do wish. that. I wish. I actually Malort. thought about carrying um, – uh, but it's a liquor. Oh no! Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so it's a lifter, so I can't carry it. So uh, it's, it's been on the freeway. Well, did, yeah, didn't someone right. didn't someone do a Malort barrel aged beer? I wanted to say Three Floyds did, and I just cringed horribly. I that actually fits with their branding, so I could totally see why they would do that. Yeah, I think. Uh, Gosh, a buddy, a microphone in, in Chicago, I think he yeah, did one too. Yeah, Mike did. God, yes, yeah. he did. That's right. Oh, I saw that, and I just cringed internally. Like, And I'll say this, even liking the Lord. No. Just no. Please. How, is, how do you like the Lord? <laughs> because I like to hate myself, all right, okay, Kevin? That's right. <laughs> it is the t- is a taste of self-loathing, all right? You just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It Sorry distilled. if I'm making it's anyone. Dist- it's distilled gym socks and self-loathing. That is the flavor of Malort. All right. So if you hate yourself, you know what Malort tastes like. <laughs> Sorry if I'm making anyone sick. I was trying to find my wife's keys because it looks like it's about to start raining here in Bloomington and her windows are all down. So oh, I hope well. not. We're, we're up here in Martinsville and we're kind of looking around getting ready to fire the smoker up. So I hope not, Curtis, but I'm right there we with actually, you. We uh, actually, I smoked today. I smoked uh, two racks of ribs from noon to 6 p.m. Oh, hell yeah. That's some good meat. Oh, yeah, we're, it was. We're, we're, out here having, we're out here having a smoke. No. <laughs> <laughs> that could go two different ways, which I love. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're not in Colorado, so, you know, it's Indiana-based. We, we, like we like a good rack of beef, really. That's uh, what you need those Malort barrels for. You know, oh, smoke some meat over Malort no, barrel no. wood. No, no. <laughs> that, no, that does make me want to vomit over the side of my balcony. <laughs> like, oh, God, no. We definitely look forward to the Bruce Cruise, for sure. And yep. um, I, I gotta, I gotta get Wayne Horn to to go get some beer, and maybe he can like send send them to me. Well, just as like a lot of other breweries are doing this, I about to pull the trigger on uh, one of those seamers. So I think I'm gonna start putting some things in some cans. No, no, Sean. Ooh. What are you What are you looking at? Just out of curiosity. The Oktoberfest or Do it. October. Do it. Absolutely. We Let's, just got we just got our SL we got our SL model literally at the start of this whole mess. We were lucky enough to put our name down. Well, in Monticello is home, uh, like all uh, packaging, right? So the cans are made right here in Monticello that most oh, everybody uses. Awesome. So I can just take a truck and grab all the brights I need. It just it makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm going that route. So hopefully here, Kevin, I should get some before too long. You know, Wayne will have them. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything else, I've ever put in a bottle. If, if nothing else, I'll drive up there, Sean. Well, I'll, then I'll ferry some beer down here, bud. I mean, if okay. If I can leave yeah. the brewery one of these days, yeah. <laughs> hey, how about how about how about this? You know, we'll we'll make an arrangement. You and I'll chat, and you know, I'll bring some halfway. You bring some halfway. We we go. We can go ahead and do the great Indiana beer swap. I'm always good with that. I'm right. always good with that. All right, before yeah, you leave, bad. Sean. Before you leave, you know, when we do have an official Outer Habit of Pint podcast at. After each episode, at the end of each episode, we raise our glasses and then we say, Cheers, you little craft beer nerds. Woohoo! Cheers, guys.